I didn't forget what you did with the whole Angela and Michael situation at that time. Sean, you were quite biased. Yeah, we need somebody to host this reunion who is also going to call every single person out. Hello, That's everybody. Cool. Welcome to my channel, Miss Criticizer 2021. Hope you all are doing well. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell. 90 Day Fiancé Season 9. Hey. Yeah, 90 Day Fiancé Season 9. Um, the Tell All. The, the tell all that we have been waiting for. I skipped last week's um, episode because it was so boring. There was nothing to talk about. Everybody had their weddings and everything. Yeah? So, the reunion is being filmed in New York. Who New York City where it's always filmed. We see everybody arriving. Everybody is getting hyped up for this reunion. They said, hey, they have some things to get off their chest. And we gotta see who we gotta see. Plus, we have two special guests. The ones that will be doing the commentary behind the scene. Which is Ken and which is Tim. I don't care for Tim. I like Ken, by the way, but I don't care for Tim. So these are the two pillow talkers. Yeah, um, everybody is arriving in the green room. Um, and Jibri, as usual, will be doing the most. He wore his best sparkling purple suit. He's ready to roast everybody. And as we can see in the episode, he literally had to make this show about him. He had to make this entire reunion about him putting his mouth in everybody's business. But I'll get to it. So, everybody talks about their update. Patrick and Thais, they moved to Vegas. And we see um, Emily and Colby. Uh, oh, Colby has really put, up a, put on a lot of weight. But, um, yeah, they are also doing well. They have a daughter, a beautiful daughter. Things seem to be going very well with them. And... At least Kobe is working. He finally got a job. He got his green card. He's working full time and even extra hours. They also said that there are two ladies that are pregnant. Two ladies that are pregnant. And to be honest, I thought that Shaida was one of the ladies that were, was pregnant. No, it's Kara and Thais. They're both pregnant at the same time. Three months. I said, well, congratulations. Good for you guys. Now, let me run quickly through um, everybody. I love Sean, but can we get a new um, replacement to host the, the reunion? Yeah, can we, can we get that? Because sometimes with Sean, there were certain things that she was doing, she was sometimes very biased. I felt that sometimes she was always siding with the American women, specifically Angela. I didn't forget what you did with the whole Angela and Michael situation at that time. Sean, you were quite biased. Yeah, we need somebody to host this reunion who is also going to call every single person out. That's what the reunion is for. If you cannot take the heat, then you gotta go. I love Sean, but mm, let somebody else do it. Somebody who is messy. That's all I'm trying to say. And somebody who can call everybody out and not specifically um, certain people. Let me get to Jibri and Ari. They're back and forth throughout this whole reunion. I'm going to start with their part first. Because it was just crazy. When they asked um, Jibri that, how do you feel about your friends and your family? It seems like you guys have grown distant. Um, it seems like there's not really a bond between your family. Do you think they're jealous? And he said, well... Um, yes, they are jealous because I've moved on to bigger and better things. And of course, Ari put her two cents on the whole matter, saying that, well, you know, Jibri is an only child, is an only son, so of course every mother is overprotective. And of course, Jibri was not feeling Ari, and he said that, listen, if you want to talk about my mom being jealous, you don't even have anything to say. You're the last person to talk about jealous, considering how you are reacting of, um, of Biniam. How Biniam is out here wrestling with another woman and you get so jealous and angry very quickly. You are out here running your mouth and um, stopping Biniam from moving forward. I said, where the hell is this Vim coming from? He said that Biniam is the star. He's, the He's a superstar. He can do without you. I said, what? What the hell is, where is this coming from? Saying that Biniam can't do without you. 
Biniam is um Biniam, you are the one who is always stopping him behind. If he is going to start winning matches and he's going to start coming with a lot of money, where will you be found? Because a lot of women are going to come up to him and you don't need to be up there. I said, what the hell is this? Jibri, Jibri, damn, this guy is so petty. Like, you, what has Ari done to you that you have to be coming for her? Like, throughout all the scenes, he was just coming for her. Seriously. So, um, yeah. So, of course, Biniam said that um, he too, he finally got his green card and he's just going to focus on pursuing her career his career as an MMA fighter. Of course, they asked Ari, what do you think of it? She said, listen, I don't have a problem with it, but we need to plan things properly. You know, now he has he has his green card. He's able to practice. And also, as long as he makes time for the family, I don't have a problem with that. So, of course, everybody had this open dialogue about how they would have reacted if they've seen Biniam um, wrestling with another woman on the floor, this and that. Everybody had mixed reactions, you know, like um, Emily said, oh, well, you know, if it was communicated with me, I don't have a problem with it. And I said, Emily, stop lying. You would have still found fault in every little thing that Kobe was doing. We didn't forget about you. You don't need to come all high and mighty to this reunion thinking that you're better than the rest. So they also ask Eve about certain things. How are things between her and Mohammed? Um, is she allowed to dress how she wants to? And she said, yes, now things are going well. Mohammed too has put on some good, good weight. Things seems to be okay with them. And um, yeah, and she said that, hey, at least Mo is allowing her to dress a little bit liberal. He's no longer that strict. And again, they were talking about just how it is in the culture and she said she was just talking about oh how it was because it was like a reverse culture shock when he came he was imposing his um strict you know culture on her so she didn't feel comfortable and of course who comes into this conversation jibri as usual nobody asked this dude anything and he just had to come and poke his nose in this conversation saying that oh well i've been to egypt before and you should have known how their culture is that's how it is it's conservative and everything i've been there it's normal so these are things you should have known even though i agree and this is what i've said earlier on but jibri it's not about you he said he said well it's egypt and all that and and then he said and jibri said at least i see you guys working yeah i see something genuine last for ari and Biniam, I don't see it last. And I said, you don't see it last? He said, nope, I don't see it last 100%. And I'm like, who asked you? Jibri, you're doing the most. They get to Patrick and Thais. And he said that, okay, the first time he heard that she was pregnant, he was shocked. Because he knew that there was a time that he had extremely low sperm count. Based on the steroids and certain supplements that he was taking, substances that he was taking. So, um, he didn't believe it at first, but eventually he believed it. And she said before she shared it with Patrick, she took six tests. She hid them in the cupboard. And I'm like, girl, why the hell would you keep all those six tests and keep them in the cupboard? Couldn't you just go to the uh, OBGYN to get a proper test? I don't understand. They just talk about double standard, how Thais is always good at hiding information that she never shares with Patrick. But then when Patrick does it, she attacks him. For example, from the time when she was living in Brazil and she found out that Patrick cheated on her. But he didn't consider it cheating because he only kissed her. So she said based on that, she wants to be seeing his phone all the time and she just wants to see what he's doing. And so they call um, Thais's father on Skype and they ask him how do you feel you know hearing that your daughter is now pregnant how do you feel now and he said well he was not happy to hear that at first of course no he felt that it was too soon into the marriage but um, hey eventually he accepts uh, the pregnancy with open arms and um, he wished that um, yeah she has a safe delivery and he loves her very much he was emotional he was crying oh she's such a daddy's girl he was emotional he was crying but he just wished everybody the best 
Then we get to Cara and uh, Guillermo. Um, we're just keeping it very, very short. Of course, they were just saying how controlling she is and she always treats him like a child. And, um, you know, Bilal also puts his two cents in it. And he said, I don't treat, I don't treat Shahida like a kid. And everybody was looking at him like, are we watching the same show? So she said, oh, I don't really treat her like a kid. And they said, listen, what you're saying, you're contradicting yourself. And he said, okay, well, maybe. But the thing is, you know, Shayda, she's not your typical American 37 years old. She lives with her parents. She has never paid bills. She's not really that responsible. So I had to show her a couple of things. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. And they called him a neat freak and all that stuff. And they played the tape back on how Shahida got pranked in regards to that whole old home issue and whatever. And Kobe put, of course, Kobe said that, well, bro, you made her look like a gold digger, even though she wasn't. And I can understand how she feels like because it's shocking to see that. Um, Shaida reacted and she said, listen, when I welcomed Kobe in Trinidad, we gave him the best welcome ever. We made him feel at home. And the fact that he showed me around at a depleted home, I felt that was very disrespectful. I did not expect that from him because of how he presented himself. They were going on and on and on. And then, like, of course, Bilal apologized. I just, I, uh, Guillermo said, I just want to be like, I just want to be like Bilal when I grow up. And I said, dude, no, you don't. No, you don't. So Patrick calls Bilal a salesman because the guy can talk. He knows how to convince people. He knows how to always have the last word. And that's a salesman's tactic. Also, basically, gaslighting. And also, Shahida said that's the reason why he always deflects when they have arguments. When she's pointing out something wrong that he's doing, he's going to deflect and also talk about the mistakes that she is making. So they need to work out their issues. Now, um, Shan, the presenter, asked her that about the prenup agreement and the adjustments. What's going to happen? She asked a very good question. What's going to happen if you don't have a child by 40? Is it going to be a divorce? And she either said, well, actually not. It's not going to be a divorce, but we just put it out there so that we can at least fulfill that promise. Um, so guess who they bring out? They brought out Bilal's ex, the other one, this um, Saida or whatever. They brought her... She came out very briefly, she was quite emotional and they asked her what is the cause of you guys, your divorce, the ex-wife of course. And she said, well, you know, I, I, did, I felt like I didn't have a husband. I felt like I had an imam, I had a father. And it was, it was just not easy. He was also still OCD and plus we had two children at that time. So it, it, it was quite frustrating dealing with that and I felt like there was more things than that so that's why she was the one who filed for divorce and you can see she was just so emotional so they asked um, Shida like why are you not looking at the ex-wife's direction she said I don't have anything to say to that woman she dis disrespected me the other time when she saw me and once you show me who you are that's who you are like I don't need to be friends with you anymore I thought we are building a sisterhood but she took it upon myself to get personal coming in my home and then trying to talk to me in a condescending tone and talking about this whole prenup that has nothing to do with her I said yep you're damn right and of course um, the ex-wife she was like oh um, I she was just so annoying and of course it's uh, the ex-wife said listen when you come to the USA things are different especially when it comes to prenuptial agreement that's the standard year in the US you know especially if you're not coming in with any assets and I said yep that's a dig at Shaida if you're not coming in with any ex assets and if you're not married and then she asked her my dear when you were married, when you got married to Bilal first, did you come with any assets? Did you even got, did you even even have a prenup? And you're coming to tell me about this? Jibri, as usual, who nobody asked, 
he said <coughs> that you guys have some underlying issues you need to resolve it this is not the place to resolve it I can feel the tension I can feel the tension right in this room I said gosh anyway so as last Shawnee asked um, the ex-wife Saida that how do, how do you feel looking back on how Shaida reacted when she got to that home? And she said, I was hurting for Bilal. I was hurting because the way she reacted was so ungrateful. You know, I stayed in that house for two years and, it, and I was humbled. And I felt like Shaida did not feel humble at all she was just she came across like a gold digger because of how she reacted she only wanted the nice and the flashy things but she did not know the things that i had to go through things that we had to go through we suffered to get to where we were i said gosh and i said you know what i have to applaud i have to give an applause to um shaida because she was calm collected quiet and she didn't even give face to the ex-wife seriously the ex-wife she gotta let it go you still have feelings for Bilal just let it go and stop being bitter you don't have any business talking about them so um I'm just skipping through some people's one um you know they talked about Mo how he always threatens to leave to Egypt um because of whatever the this and that Mo Mo has been threatening Eve that he will go to Egypt if he doesn't have her way. They ask everybody's reaction how they felt when he said, Oh, I'm going to look for another sponsor. And they were like, Damn, are you a gold digger? Are, are you using her for a green card? Like you made it so obvious, like she's replaceable, this and that. And he said, Oh no, I didn't mean it like that. And of course you have Eve always defending him. John eventually comes out, yeah? John comes out and they were just uh, they were asking john oh you know give comment on um now patrick and thais their relationship and everything and he said oh i'm just happy for their pregnancy i'm happy that they're happy and i just want the best for my little brother so and and he looked a bit drunk again nobody asked jibri jibri had to interfere jibri said Jibri, as usual, asked him that, are you drunk? How many beers did you have? And then John said, you better watch your mouth. You better watch your mouth. And I said, I know that's right. Jibri, you're going to get a taste of your own medicine. Since you're running your mouth about everything. John said, sit down, man, with your sparkling suits, blinding my entire eyes. And then Jibri said, you don't have a life you're always interfering in your brother's uh business and all that and and then um john gave it to him and he said well you are also on your mom's tit so get off the tit mommy's boy you don't have a backbone and you're very insecure i said yep john johnny you give it to him yeah so um that's how john put um jibri in his place and i said yep John, you know I don't really like you, but Jibri had to be told. He was putting his mouth in everybody's business. Saying, I think I missed some parts, Patrick saying that American women can be quite bossy and controlling, which I sometimes agree with, especially the ones on this show. And, um, of course, the women, they, didn't, they were not really happy to hear it, specifically Kara and Emily, but they are bossy. That's just how it is. And I don't think they can do that to American men. Like, I've put my two cents on that. They cannot do that to American men. They know what they're doing. Anyway, um, I think that's the end of the episode. It was a long one. If I haven't covered certain things, maybe it was just not too important to me. Jibri was doing the most. Jibri wants to extend his 15 minutes of fame on this show. And he's just trying to do everything to stay relevant. Because I don't know what that was all about. He was interjecting in everybody's segment. It's not about you. They'll get to you in the next episode. Why the hell are you talking? I'm glad that John put him in his place. Dude, keep quiet. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.